Hello, I'm Beverly Thompson. Welcome to City Life, dedicated to keeping you informed on Durham's important news and events. Well, what do you think about Durham? Well, every two years we ask about 1,200 residents many questions, specific questions, to find out what they think of Durham and the services local government provides. The city recently announced how Durham scored with residents. We sat down with City Manager Tom Bonfield to talk about what the survey revealed and the city's plans for addressing several issues of concern to you. Tom, thanks so much for sitting down to talk to us today about the Resident Satisfaction Survey. Get us started briefly about why the city even does this kind of survey every two years. The city has been uh, conducting a Resident Satisfaction Survey every couple of years and we do it for a couple of, a couple of reasons. One and principally because we really care about what citizens and residents think about our community, about how the city services are provided, but also it gives us some uh, benchmark and some baseline data to compare how well we are improving our organization to meet the needs of the residents. I know we gather a lot of information, but essentially what do you do with this information once you get it? Well, we, uh, we take it very seriously, the information we get. We, uh, we analyze the data, we compare again how well we've improved or some areas that, uh, that need improvement that maybe we haven't progressed as much as we thought we thought we would, but also we really learn from the residents what their priorities are uh, in, in the case of uh, where they think their tax dollars should be spent, uh, where they think improvements need to be made, and it, and it really helps us uh, to understand also from, from the entire community uh, because many times we, we only hear from a, a few individuals about what they think about city services or city government. This gives us a way to, in, in a very uh, 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 statistically valid, if you, if you could say so, way of really knowing that uh, what, what the entire community is thinking. Well, tell me then, what was the most surprising thing for you from this year's survey? Well, you know, I don't know that I'd say anything really surprised me because I think so much of what we're doing, think so much of our organization, but certainly uh, what was very pleasing was that we have continued to make remarkably uh, uh, great progress and strides in so many areas. Citizens uh, and residents across the board uh, gave us very good remarks and uh, marks in terms of the city is going in the right direction, moving in the right direction. And quite frankly, in, uh, in this time and age, uh, cities across the country and as a result of the economy are really struggling. And, and so what really pleased me uh, was learning that uh, uh, we had made so much progress when uh, comparable cities around the country have actually had their marks and their perspectives of citizens go down. Uh huh. That certainly must have been pretty good news for us. Huh? Very, very pleasing. Yeah, yeah. Tom, I know there were some, some specific areas that got really, really high marks from residents. Talk about those sure. a little bit for uh, me. Well, I think the highest uh, marks, as I recall, uh, was actually in fire and emergency services. We were, we were very pleased about that. Parks and recreation uh, rated very highly in the survey. Uh, greenways, uh, our, our open space and trails was very positive as well. Citizens liked our solid waste collection services, many of those kinds of things. Th those were some of the highest ones. One of, one of the ones that uh, made me the, the, uh, the happiest was uh, how citizens viewed our employees mm -hmm. and uh, how they, uh, they felt that our employees were extremely courteous, responsive to their needs. And uh, that's something we really are striving hard to improve. What do you attribute that to? Our employees, we have yeah. great employees, uh -huh. and, and, and so quite frankly, we, we, uh, we make a conscious uh, decision in this organization for excellence, mm -hmm. uh, for quality of service. Our, our, our campaign around uh, culture of service to, uh, to the community is really important, mm -hmm. and I think it's, uh, it's a signal that is starting to take hold by the results of the, uh, the survey. Okay. I know an area of concern has been the perception of safety, and we've, we've really monitored that over the past few years. What did the survey reveal in this area this time? Well, that's another area that, that we, were really, we were really pleased because the survey told us that the majority of citizens and residents in our community do feel safe. They feel safe in their neighborhood. They feel safe in city parks. They feel safe walking streets. Uh, you know, they, they feel safe in downtown. It was pretty much across the board. Now, is it where we want it to be? No, we're going to continue to, to, uh, to, to uh, seek to improve that area. Mm -hmm. In fact, the, you know, one of the things that the residents told us is this is safety and public safety continues to be one of their highest priorities. And uh, so while we, we have made tremendous progress, in, uh, in the perceptions of feeling of safety on the, on the part of the, uh, the residents, uh, we're not going to stop. We're going to continue to move forward and try to, try to enhance that even more. But it, it was great results. Good, good. I can tell you're happy with that. 
Tom, it sounds like Durham has made some really nice strides in the areas that we've really focused on. But I know that there are some areas that residents felt further attention needed to be paid to. Uh, can you give us a little information about those areas? Well, there were three main areas that, uh, that kind of separated themselves from, uh, from the others in terms of where citizens want us to continue to pay attention. Uh, at the top of the list was the, uh, the roads and the condition of our roads and paving. Second was the, uh, the, the uh, public safety uh, and, and police uh, kinds of services. And third one was one that I didn't quite expect to be at, the t at that high in the list, but it had to do with traffic congestion. And uh, so that's one that, uh, that we're going to take, take a closer look at. Uh -huh. What do you think uh, the traffic congestion really points to? Well, I, I, uh, I don't really know. I think that uh, for the most part, uh, Durham does enjoy a, a fairly uh, positive uh, traffic environment. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that uh, most people who are in their cars a lot, uh, when, when uh, they, 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 it's just a personal inconvenience for, uh, for their to people to get where they want to get to on time, or any number of things, and quite frankly, our community is growing. Mm -hmm. And uh, as that with with that growth comes more automobiles on the road, and uh, you know, for particularly for people who maybe have uh, have been here a while, uh, they just see more vehicles and more cars. It takes a little bit longer to get through intersections, and and it pops out as something that they'd like to see us address. Kind of like a double-edged sword, huh? Not necessarily a bad thing, even yeah. though it's. Uh, residents kind of see and, it and quite frankly uh, for for those of us who have come from other places uh, I'd like to personally remind people in Durham that traffic conditions here are really very good compared to many other places so we're just just not quite what we're used to um, well looking at all those things together how does the city plan to address those areas well certainly in the area of paving and, and, uh, and street resurfacing thanks to the uh, the citizens approval of the uh, the bond referendum a year or so ago uh, we've made tremendous strides with uh, phase one of the uh, of the paving last year. Uh, we'll complete uh, all of the uh, the paving uh, in this upcoming paving season so that we'll hopefully be able to say that there are no city streets in Durham that are in poor or very poor condition. So we're going to continue to do that. We also have made the commitment that we will be uh, placing additional funding in our operating budget so that we don't fall behind in, in, in the paving area. As it relates to public safety, uh, we are continuing to, uh, to provide uh, resources to the police department, uh, the coordination between the police department, uh, the sheriff's office and the judicial system I think is as good as it's been in quite some time. Uh, we are working together. Uh, we we really realize the, uh, uh, the concerns that some citizens may have about safety and, uh, and we are preparing to address that. As it relates to the last issue I talked about with traffic congestion, I think that's one that uh, there's a couple of pieces to that. Certainly the city has made uh, transit a very high priority. Uh, we have seen the approval of the transit referendum. We are ver working very closely with the North Carolina Department of Transportation and with TTA to, uh, to really figure out how we can improve not just the automobile uh, viability on our roadways with, with proper planning, proper construction, but also improving transit both uh, with the bus system and hopefully at some point in the future the light rail system. Mm -hmm. Now I know one interesting tidbit about the survey is, um, and, and actually nobody likes to pay taxes, but people don't feel like they're getting a good value for their tax dollars. What do you think about that? Well, the, you know, the survey, I think uh, we asked that question, do you, you know, do you feel like you're getting a good value for your tax dollar? And I believe it was around 40% of the, uh, the respondents, something in that area, said that they, they did. Uh, so I think you have to, but you have to be, you know, uh, put that in context. While we would like that to be a higher number, mm -hmm. that actually is maybe just at average or just a little bit above the norm of what cities across the country, uh, uh, you know, you would expect a, a very similar response. So I don't think our, our area, uh, our, our results in that area are, are anything dramatically different. Mm -hmm. And I do think that uh, uh, you have to uh, keep the economy in the context of all those discussions that we recognize that uh, uh, there has been a, a significant challenge for many, many families in our community uh, over the last several years as the economy has struggled and uh, people are, are, are very concerned. But, but I believe that uh, based on the, the results of the survey that, uh, that the city government of Durham is really building a, a positive what they call brand equity with the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, they, that the residents are seeing the, the uh, city moving in the right direction. They're seeing many positive enhancements to the community. So I'm optimistic that uh, the next time we take the survey, uh, we'll, citizens, more citizens, more residents who respond 
we'll, uh, we'll, we'll boost our numbers there even more and people will feel even more that the tax dollars that they are providing are being well spent. Okay, all right. Now, in a few minutes, we're gonna be talking to Shelley Green from the Durham Convention and Visitors Bureau. And she monitors what visitors think about Durham. And they, they do a survey every couple of years as well. Why should we want to get information about our resident satisfaction survey to visitors? Well, I mean, I think it's important anytime that uh, that you know people visit a community, whether it's us visiting another community or visitors uh, coming to Durham, that that you want to know that uh, um, you know what the conditions are there. That you you want to know what the people who live there think about that community. Uh, it certainly is going to. Uh, uh, contribute to your decision as to whether you're going to come back, probably maybe even whether you want to go there to begin with. You know, we spend a lot of time on, on uh, social media and the internet uh, you know, communicating about, uh, about Durham. And so as folks are thinking about Durham, hearing about Durham, maybe it's coming to visit, maybe it's coming to a, uh, a show at the Durham Performing Arts Center or uh, coming to uh, stay at one of the hotels in our community, coming to one of the universities, they're going to check us out. And I think to the extent that they know our residents how our residents feel about our community, whether it's safety, whether it's you know the conditions of roads, whatever, uh, you know the more likely they're going to have to to be looking for a positive experience when we when they get here. Tom, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share with us about the Citizen Satisfaction Survey? Well, I would just say that uh, you know I, I think if you look at the strides that this community has made since we began taking the survey in 2006, uh, I think the uh, the numbers are maybe 18 or 20 percent improvement in just those uh, six years, uh, that in of itself is absolutely remarkable. But then in the context of, of uh, what uh, we're seeing across the country, and I think it's fair to point out the, the consultant that we used is not from Durham, not a Durhamite, you know, he's an independent uh, folk who, who, uh, who does this kind of work all over the country. And, uh, and, and the communication was that they haven't seen another city uh, make as much progress as the city of Durham has made in a six year period. So. Uh, I think that's the, the, the point I would, I would want to hit home. You know, we're pleased that the residents think we're making progress and we're pleased with the progress we're making, but we're not going to stop here. We're going to continue. I, I know that we listen to citizens all the time. In fact, the survey is just one way that we listen to citizens. And I think a lot of people are always impressed about the other ways, you know, our coffees with council, neighborhood college, but we're constantly listening to what our residents are telling. Absolutely. I mean, Durham prides itself in being a connected community, an active community, and uh, we are so fortunate to have citizens who care, who want to participate, but at the same time, uh, we're going to continue to look for every opportunity we can to, uh, to reach out to our residents, find out what's on their minds, hear their concerns, and, uh, and certainly in, uh, in two more years, we'll be back again with another resident survey to see how well we're doing. Great. Tom, thank you so much for joining me to My talk pleasure. about such an interesting topic, I think, for a lot of residents. Thank you. If you'd like to see the complete results of the Resident Satisfaction Survey, simply visit the city's website, go to the Budget and Management Services Department, and then follow the links. We're going to take a quick break now, but coming up in the next segment, we're going to take a closer look at how others view the Bull City and why it matters. We'll be right back. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. This can't be happening. Of course it's not happening. Armored car. <laughs> Listen, having money isn't about luck. Make your own coffee, save a thousand bucks a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Red state. Blue state. Vegan. Carnivore. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. Optimus. Center. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But when we live united, we create real, lasting change in the building blocks of life. The education, income, and health of our communities, live. our families, united. even the person next to us. Live united. Real change won't happen without you. So give. 
Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Sign up at liveunited.org. Bacteria is the leading cause of tooth decay, which is the number one chronic childhood disease. Ugh, that ain't no fairy tale. What? Tell the kids of America how to prevent tooth decay. Do I get a superhero costume? A tooth fairy? Kids of America. You gotta brush them, floss them, and rinse them twice a day. Visit the dentist and go to americastoothfairy.org to help rescue a kid from pain. Let's get her done. <laughs> Welcome back to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson, your host. We've taken a close look at what residents think about Durham. But what about visitors to Durham? What do they think about us and why does it matter? Joining me to answer those questions is Shelley Green. Shelley is the president and CEO of the Durham Convention and Visitors Bureau, which is the organization that markets and promotes Durham as a place to visit. Welcome Shelley and thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure. Shelley, the Durham Convention and Visitors Bureau commissioned a public opinion poll. In fact, you've done it for 18 years now regarding, among other things, Durham's image. Let me first start off by asking, why does the DCVB even gather this information each year, and why should our residents care about what other people think about us? Well, when you invite visitors into your community, you want to make sure that they have a really good, pleasant experience. If they do that, then the cash registers ring. And when the cash registers ring, then local governments also benefit with tax dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh, about 18 years ago when we first started the survey, one of the things that we learned is that visitors were hearing very negative comments from people who they thought were residents. But in reality, um, about one, or excuse me, two out of every three people who work in Durham are not from Durham. So we really had to dig into all of the data and find out why this was happening and what was behind some of these image issues. Mm -hmm. So did you ever find out why people who weren't residents of Durham think so negatively about our city? Yes. Um, part of the reason is that people are more comfortable with people that look just like them. Mm -hmm. And Durham has always been known for its diversity in different cultures and ethnicities and races. So, so that was part of it. Uh, another big part of it, though, was that unlike any other major city in the state of North Carolina, Durham it was covered by two major daily newspapers, mm. the NNO out of Raleigh and of course Durham's paper, the Herald Sun. Uh -huh. So whenever there was negative news, it seemed like twice as much was happening in Durham uh -huh. that was negative. And on the opposite side of that, from the positive aspect, uh, we weren't getting a lot of attribution for the city of Durham mm -hmm. when it was positive. Those things might be attributed to Research Triangle Park or to mm -hmm. Duke University or to North Carolina Central U University, not specifically to Durham. Okay, I have to ask you, do you think that was purposeful or just a I, matter of how it was covered? I don't think so. I, I think that that's just kind of how it was done for so many mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. um, that it's just been a long road to try and undo some of that. I see, I see. Well, tell me, how does your survey differ from the one that the city does? Well, our survey, uh, just like the city's, uses a random sample of people. And that's really important because the random sample guarantees that you're going to get a representative population that can then be um, assumed to uh, mirror what the population in general would think. Mm -hmm. Respondents of the city survey knew that they were being asked by the city of Durham because it was about city services. And it was a written survey. Mm -hmm. Our survey was a telephonic survey, and the people had no idea who was commissioning the survey. Oh. They didn't even know it was about Durham. Uh -huh. So ours gathered a lot of real top of mind answers because we ask about a lot of different topics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what did the survey say? Well, first of all, the good news, um, you know, Durham's self-image, what we think of ourself, has always been very high. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was something we learned 18 years ago, is people thought Durham was very down on itself. And, uh -huh. and consequently, you have seen over the years bumper stickers that say, Durham, love yourself. Mm -hmm. That was never the problem. Durham has always felt pretty good about itself. Uh -huh. Um, but our neighbors didn't necessarily uh, share that same positive feeling. 
But our self-pride in 2011, when this survey was done, has risen to its highest level ever, wow. and that's over 90% wow. of our residents are proud of Durham, and they're really glad that they live here. Impressive. Wow. Okay. So what do our neighbors think about us? Well, again, this is something that has changed greatly over 18 years. Uh. 18 years ago, when the survey was first done, only 12% of the residents of Wake County and 17% of the residents in Orange County had a favorable image of Durham. Hmm. Now, that's all change. Orange County's favorability is at about 89%, almost as high as what Durhamites think of themselves. And Wake County has risen to 76%, and that's an all-time high for them as well. That is incredible. What do you attribute that to? It's, it's really hard to attribute it to any one thing. Mm -hmm. um, image is not impacted by building things or offering new services because it's something that happens day in and day out. Mm. Um, so it, it's just something that's changed over time. And you can see uh, on the chart how it just gradually, you move people from negative to undecided, mm -hmm. and then you move people from undecided to positive. Uh -huh. Okay, Shelley. So my initial reaction to this is, is pretty mixed. You know, on one hand, I'm really pleased, but then on the other hand, I keep hearing people, particularly people from the East, who are still negative about Durham. So tell me, how can that be? Well, it can be because 11% of people who live in Wake County still say they are negative about Durham. And if you just do the simple math, that's about 100,000 people. Okay. So th there still is some negativity there, but the good news is, is that has changed drastically over the last 18 years. Mm -hmm. and, and it's also important to remember that what you hear when you're talking to friends or neighbors or, or people that you come in contact with, that information is anecdotal. Mm -hmm. That's one person's opinion at that one given time. And that's why it's so important to use these generalizable surveys so that you can really project out what an entire community or county thinks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what other good news can you share with us, Shelley? Uh, other good news, uh, safety. Our, our residents, by and large, feel very safe uh, and, and have continued to do that. Uh, Durham Public Schools is another very positive story. Um, residents that have children in the Durham Public Schools, more than 80% of them have a positive image of Durham uh, Public Schools. That's good to hear. And that's risen, again, steadily for mm -hmm. the past four years. Um, so those are some of the other uh, good news. Okay, well, what are some areas of concern that we need to pay attention to? Uh, the biggest areas of concern that are still out there relate to appearance. Mm -hmm. And appearance means everything from how our roadways look. Is there litter there? Do we have boarded up houses? Um, are our medians well kept on the highways or on the roadways? Or are there weeds growing up in between the concrete? Um, attractive roadways is something that we did not um, score very high on. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's in comparing that to the city, that's a, that's a different question than the city had mm -hmm. because I think we have also seen that residents are very pleased with how their roads have been maintained. But it's not the same thing as looking at litter mm -hmm. and, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, another troublesome, troublesome spot that we need to work on is visitors and new residents in particular, they need wayfinding. Mm -hmm. They way need signage. signage. They need ways of figuring out where they are and how to get from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of confusing streets here. We have a lot of confusing signage here. Mm. So this is something that we're going to need to tackle on a countywide basis to put wayfinding into place. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, Shelley, after watching this show, I imagine there are a lot of people who are going to want to know what they can do to help. How can they get accurate information to help mitigate you know, any kind of negativity that is out there about Durham? Well, the Durham Convention and Visitors Bureau has a lot of great resources on its website, which is uh, www.durham-nc.com. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of tools on there, such as some of the biggest myths that we have about Durham and, mm -hmm. and kind of the truth behind them. Uh, we have information that is great for newcomers. Uh, we even have a database of accolades of all mm. the wonderful things that have been said about Durham by the news media and mostly the national news media. 
Uh, we also operate a visitor center six days a week. You can always stop by there and get information from us. Or you can become a fan and like us oh. on Facebook. Uh -huh. uh, the Durham Convention and Visitors Bureau has the Durham NC Facebook page. Okay. So we'd encourage you, if you're a Facebook user, to uh, just type in Durham NC and like us on that page. Cool. Okay. Any final thoughts you'd like to leave us with? Um, image is very, very important to a community. It's mm -hmm. not only important to residents and their level of pride, but it's also important to our overall brand for Durham. Uh -huh. Because when visitors come here, they can tell that we are proud of our community. We make them feel welcome. And then, of course, they're going to come back again and again and spend lots of money. And that's money new to our community. We don't have to uh, educate their children. We don't have to provide a lot of services. Mm -hmm. We just essentially take their money, give them a wonderful experience, and send them back to tell their friends and neighbors. Mm -hmm. OK, good message. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. It's my pleasure. I, you do so much to make Durham a great place to live and work and play. And I don't think a lot of people recognize that how um, essential you are to help promote Durham and uh, give them good information. Well, Durham is where great things happen. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Shelley. Thank you. Well, that does it for this edition of City Life. If you have a comment or a future show idea, email us or call us. We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to like DTV8 on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. You can also watch our programming on demand from the city's website and on YouTube to stay informed on all the latest news and events involving the city of Durham. I'm Beverly Thompson. Thank you so much for joining me to learn more about city life in Durham. out the action hero in you fuel up right and get energized be part of the greatest action movie ever the first movie that puts you in the action show us how you train and eat like an action hero join in at actionheroalliance.com kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov.